The motion of a projectile is the perfect use case for our new tools in describing motion. Projectiles are uh, bodies which are given initial velocity, something that you throw or shoot, and then it's, uh, it's subjected only to the effects of gravity and maybe drag force, but we will be ignoring drag force. So it's subjected, in our case, to only the effects of gravity, nothing else. So regardless of whichever direction you throw something, uh, it's going to stay within that same plane unless uh, you're including drag force, which is, you know, wind. Um, if it was a windy day, it might go in, in, in some different direction, but it's going to stay in the same plane if you throw something. It's going to land somewhere uh, some distance from it. Um, this path that the body follows is called the trajectory. So the path of a projectile is the trajectory. And there's other things other than drag force that we're going to be ignoring. And so we're going to be working with what's called an idealized model. So it's, uh, it works for some scenarios, but there are others that uh, the model breaks down and we would have to consider more things. So the curvature of the earth does not matter when you're talking about throwing a baseball. Um, if you are instead talking about firing a rocket and it's traveling some great distance, you might need to consider the curvature of the earth. Um, likewise, if you're covering great distances, you might need to talk about gravitational changes by elevation, uh, like with the rocket, um, but we are not. And we're also not going to consider the rotation of the Earth. So all these things that might not even have came to mind, um, it's important to know what scenarios our model applies to and what it doesn't. And so we are ignoring drag force and all the rest and only considering the gravitational acceleration downwards, which would be g. Yeah, You can write it like that if you wanted to be sloppy. So if we wanted to map out the projectile's motion, we only need two dimensions, as I mentioned. And it's useful to write the vertical dimension as y, always. And the horizontal as x. Maybe that's about 90 degrees there. So this will be our x dimension. And so we fire some projectile, and it follows the path, path we did in some color like this. It follows some path like this. And the reason it follows that path is not magic. It's because we gave it some initial velocity, which is some reddish color we were using before. So we gave it some velocity initially. In that direction, v naught initial velocity. And uh, this vector, this initial velocity, we shot this projectile at some angle. Um, we'll call it alpha again. Alpha is the initial angle off of the horizontal that it was fired at. And so this initial velocity vector can be broken up into its component, x and y vectors. And so this would be v, uh, v not y or v y not. Do v not y. And this 
be v not x. Okay, so that gives it its initial velocity. As soon as it leaves my hand or the cannon or the gun or whatever we're talking about, as soon as it leaves, its velocity is dictated only by uh, the changes that it's undergoing from, gra uh, from, from gravity, from the acceleration due to gravity. And so ever present are the velocity components. The velocity in the x direction is nothing. It's nothing that is accelerating it forwards or backwards in this direction as it travels along this path. We're ignoring drag force. A y, the acceleration in the y direction, is negative g, because this would be the positive y direction, is upwards. We could define it another way, but in the way that we've written it here, A y is equal to minus g, which is of course negative 9.8 meters per second squared. This is what's ever present, and this is what is changing, the, um, what, is, what is bringing the projectile back down. If there were no acceleration in the y, the projectile would just continue in this direction forever and ever and ever, if there were no gravity, right? Think about if you toss something in the International Space Station, it just keeps going. But there is gravity, and so that's why the path curves as you go along. And so at every point, we consider how acceleration changes the velocity. So let's see, uh, let's analyze this point here. And then at the very peak, this point here, and then over here as it's coming down, that point there. These are the points we're going to look at. So the velocity vector again is tangent to the path it's velocity and uh, the component velocity vectors there's the x component and the y component So this is vy, and this is vx, and the angle that is made is something less than the initial angle because it's traveling uh, closer to a horizontal direction. The velocity in the x, vx, is no different than v naught x because there's no acceleration in the x direction to increase it or decrease it. Right? All along its path, the x component of velocity has no x component of acceleration. There's no parallel component to this x direction velocity to increase it or decrease it. So vx here is equal to v naught x. It's the same, and that's going to be constant throughout. But vy is different. vy here is less than v not y. So v not y is greater than v not y here because the acceleration in the y direction is negative, and so it's decreasing its speed in the positive y direction. And then here at this point, here at this point, there is, uh, we're at the very peak, so it's no longer traveling vertically or uh, ver up or down, any way vertically. So all we have, the entire velocity vector, is the x component. And I'll try to do the same length x component of velocity as the rest, vx. But that's also equal to the entire velocity. And that's also equal to, at that point, v naught x, because that is not changing. Right? 
and the angle is zero. There's, a, there's no angle offset from the horizontal. And then finally at this point here, the velocity vector is again tangent. The x component of velocity is vx equal to v naught x still unchanging because there's no acceleration applying in the x direction and vy is now downwards vy and the angle from the horizontal is the angle that we are considering so that means this is angle alpha at that point in time So that's the path of the trajectile, uh, project, projectile. That's the trajectory. And if we zoom in on the initial firing of it, we can pull out some useful mathematics to do uh, a lot of problem solving for what the rest of the path will be. So this is a deterministic scenario. From the initial conditions, we can predict with certainty the position of the particle at any other point in time. It's deterministic. So uh, Vx is always constant. I'll go back to white. Vx is always constant. And so that means that at all times, Vx is equal to v naught x. And if we look at this initial velocity picture here, this triangle, or this, uh, this velocity, initial velocity vector broken up into its components. Let's rewrite here. Um, so we have, we have some initial velocity. And that's broken up into the x component and the y component. So this is velocity. This is v uh, initial velocity, v naught x, v naught y. Right. And this you, you know this would be the x direction and this would be the y direction. And so the reason I can write these as arrows is because really v naught y is the magnitude and uh, y hat uh, y hat is the direction, right? And so this is just kind of shorthand. We're just talking about the magnitude of that component here, and the arrow is representing the direction we already know. Um, so if we look at our trigonometry here. It's not a perfect box, but this is a right angle. This is a right angle. And we have some angle here, alpha naught, that it's being shot at. And so what that means is v naught x, that's equal to v naught this guy, the magnitude of that guy, times cosine of alpha naught, right? Cosine from this angle, this one to that one. And v naught y is equal to v naught sine alpha naught.
so this is useful. If we plug in some of these projectile case-specific relationships, we apply uh, elsewhere, but specifically we're talking about projectiles, so some of the things, most specifically this one here, um, don't always apply. But when we're talking about projectiles, we can take some of these ideas that I've just expressed in white, and we can plug them into our kinematic equations, which are the equations uh, under constant acceleration from last lecture. So constant acceleration equations. And uh, we can pull out new equations that help us solve projectile motion. So x can be expressed as this, v naught cosine alpha naught times t. Right? This here is v naught x. So you can also shorthand it to v naught x times t. And now you kind of see where it came from, from our earlier equations. And y, thereby, in the same fashion, v naught sine alpha naught times t. So that's v not y t. So that's x and y given the magnitude of initial velocity and angle. So if I tell you I shot it at uh, this magnitude and this angle, then uh, you can find the position of the particle or the body that was shot at any future time t. And then we have expressions for velocity. Vx, velocity in the x direction, is v naught cosine alpha naught. You're just taking the derivative with respect to t. So if you take the derivative of this with respect to t, you just knock the t off, and that is your answer. The vy, we have an acceleration in the y direction, so it's not so simple. Vy is equal to that v naught sine alpha naught, just like before, but we have an acceleration that affects the velocity, so minus g t. So this, uh, this is acceleration in the y, right, t. But the acceleration in the y for a projectile, we're only considered gravity, gravity, and so that's g, minus g t. So this is something that's affecting the velocity, so you have to include that in there. So these equations here, mollify it for just a quick sec and say these equations should only be considered for projectile motion. But you should definitely jot them down. It will be very helpful. And you can find out everything that you need to know about a projectile from these equations. For example, so you might think, uh, well, this is only position in the x, position y, velocity x, velocity y. What, where's the rest of it? What's going on? Well, that's, um, that's everything. When you say, well, what if I want to know the absolute position? I, just, I don't want to know just how far in the x or how far in the y. Well, remember our position velocity r, position velocity vector r. Um, well, this is only two dimensions. So we have x i hat plus y j hat. Well, if you have x and you have y, then you know the full position. You know the position from the origin to wherever it is. So the velocity vector r 
to that guy. Start at the origin. And you take it all the way to here. This is R. for this time, right? So you know exactly where it is. And you know the magnitude as well, so how far away. If you uh, shot the projectile from, uh, from maybe a bow and arrow, and then you were watching your arrow fly away from your face, you can see how far it has gone from you, the magnitude of that r vector, because the magnitude is x squared plus y squared. Square root of x squared plus y squared. So if you have x and y, you have the magnitude. So that's another example of something useful that comes out of that. And also velocity, right? You can find the magnitude of the velocity if you know the, uh, the vx and vy. The magnitude of velocity is vx squared plus vy squared. And you can also find the angle, right? The angle that it's making with the horizontal at any point. This angle here angle here, even this one being zero at the peak, you can find the angle because the angle is the tangent of uh, Vy minus Vx. Right? And so the angle alpha is the inverse tangent of Vy over Vx. So there's a lot of useful quantities that we can get out of uh, these four equations. And next, we are going to do a lot of uh, practice with projectile problem solving. We're going to go through some full examples for you, and I hope that you practice on your own additionally. In fact, I know that you will. All right, it's a nice time now to take a break, grab a cup of coffee, grab a sandwich, and review these equations. Make sure you know where they came from. Look at your equations from, uh, from lecture two and see if you can make the leap. And uh, try to think about the motion of projectile motion and uh, solidify that the acceleration in the x is different from the acceleration in the y and why this path is the way that it is. I have a final question to ponder, and maybe I'll pick up if I can re remember, uh, with the answer in the next one. If I have a gun and I hold that gun exactly uh, parallel with the ground, and I fire that gun. And at the same exact moment that I fire the gun, same moment that the bullet leaves the gun, I drop another bullet right by its side. All right, so a bullet is coming out, right? And it's going very high velocity vector. At that same moment, I drop another bullet next to it from the same height from the ground. Ground. Velocity there. This one, zero velocity in that direction. It's just falling to the ground, falling to the ground. Which bullet hits the ground first? The one that's flying very, very, very fast sideways or the one that I just drop? Which one hits the ground first? I'll let you ponder that. See you in the next video.